Last time we talked about some of the basics of sets. We looked at some definitions uh, and we looked at some notation. So now we're going to look at set operations and we're going to look at some ways to organize the information that we know about sets. One way to organize the information about a set is with something called a Venn diagram. And when we use a Venn diagram, what we're going to be doing is looking at what are called attributes of a set. That's qualities that the subsets of a set have. So let's suppose we have a universal set that contains the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6.5. If we want to show these numbers in a Venn diagram, we're going to start with a rectangle that will represent this universal set. So all of these numbers have to live within this rectangle. And we're also going to identify three attributes to which these numbers might belong. The attributes are represented by the circles. So we'll have even as one attribute, odd as another attribute, and prime as a third attribute. So let's start with the number one. Now since one is not even, it cannot be within the circle for even. One is odd, so it has to be inside the circle that says odd. And here's the trick question. Is one a prime number? Well, one is not considered to be a prime number. So one has to be outside of the even circle, outside of the prime circle, and inside the odd circle, which means it would have to live in this part of the Venn diagram. Now let's repeat this with the other numbers. 2 is even, it is not odd, and it is prime. So it's going to be in this part of the Venn diagram. It's inside the even circle, outside the odd circle, and inside the prime circle. 3 is not even, it is odd, and it is prime. So it has to be outside the even circle, inside the odd circle, and inside the prime circle. 4 is even, it's not odd, and it's not prime. So it would have to be here in the Venn diagram. It's inside the even circle, outside the odd circle, and outside the prime circle. 5 is not even, it is odd, and it is prime. So it's going to be in this part of the Venn diagram. It's not even, so it's outside the even circle. It is odd, so it's inside the odd circle. And it is prime, so it's inside the prime circle. 6.5 is not even, it's not odd, and it's not prime. So it can't be inside any of the circles, but it's still part of the universal set. So remember, anything that's inside the rectangle is in the universal set. So 6.5 would have to be outside of all three circles. Now let's take a look at another Venn diagram. We're going to identify three attributes in this Venn diagram, small, blue, and triangle. And we're going to try to determine where these shapes would fit inside this Venn diagram. So let's start with that first triangle. It is small, it's not blue, and it is a triangle so it would have to be here in the Venn diagram. The second shape is not small, it is not blue, but it is a triangle, so it would have to be here. The next shape is small, is blue, but is not a triangle, so it has to be within both the small and the blue circles, but not in the triangle part of our Venn diagram. The fourth shape is not small, it is blue, and it's not a triangle. So it would have to be here. The next shape is small, is blue, but is not a triangle, so it goes here. And the last shape is not small, it is blue, and it's not a triangle, so it goes here. Now if you look really carefully, you'll see that each of these circles in our Venn diagram does describe all the shapes within that circle. So look at the circle that says small. Everything inside the small circle is a small shape. Look at the circle that says blue. Everything inside the blue circle is blue. 
and look inside the circle that's marked triangle. Everything inside that part of the Venn diagram is a triangle. If you'd like to play around with these shapes uh, in a Venn diagram, uh, you can check out the National Library of Virtual Manipulatives and look for their attribute blocks. So let's take a look at some set operations. Now the idea of operations is nothing new to you. Uh, you know of things like addition as being an operation that allows you to put two numbers together following some rules. Well, operations with sets do the same thing. They allow us to put sets together following certain rules. So the first operation we're going to talk about is something called intersection. So if we have two sets uh, and we want to combine them through intersection, then what we're going to do is create a set that contains the elements that are in both sets at the same time. Now there's a notation for intersection, so in this case the notation you're seeing is for the intersection of two sets A and B, and you'll notice that the intersection symbol looks kind of like an upside down U. So the way we would pronounce that is A intersect B. And if you think about kind of a common sense use of the word intersection, uh, you can think about where two streets cross. Uh, where two streets cross is the intersection. So if you're standing in the intersection like you see some of the people here doing, that means you're in both streets. So if you look at an element that's in the intersection of two sets, then that element has to be contained in both sets at the same time. Another set operation is called union. So the union of two sets is the set of all the elements that are in either one of the sets or the other set or both of the sets. So in a sense, union of two sets um, is, is kind of like dumping everything together all at the same time. Um, and the notation for union uh, looks kind of like a U. So if you see notation like this, you pronounce that as A union B. Now if you think about kind of a common sense ordinary way of thinking of the word union, um, sometimes we call a marriage a union. So let's kind of take that analogy. Um, so if you have two people that are getting married, so that's the union, and what happens when the two people get married? Well, usually um, they end up taking all of their stuff, that would mean all of her stuff and all of his stuff, and they put it all together. So if you combine everything that she has and everything that he has, um, you've got a set of things that um, just has everything that either one of them had, but it's also possible that there might be some things that they both had. So maybe she had a toaster and he had a toaster. So if you dump their, their belongings together, you might see that you have two toasters, but we know that if there are two toasters, that one of those toasters is probably not going to be kept. And the same thing is going to be true when we're working with sets. We can think of taking the union of two sets as being take the elements of the two sets and dump them together, but if there are any elements that are contained in both sets, uh, we don't have to keep that element twice. We'll only keep it once. So let's take some sets and see how we can combine them with these set operations. So let's start with A intersect B. So intersection means we're looking for all the elements that the two sets have in common. And there's only two elements that these two sets in, have in common. That would be the two and the four. Now when we combine these sets with these set operations, we are creating sets. So you'll notice that the two and the four are contained within the braces to show that we do have a new set that we've created through intersection. So how about A union B? Well, union means take all the elements in A, all the elements in B, and dump them all together. But if there's anything that duplicates, we do not have to keep the duplicate. And when we dump A and B together, you'll see that the 2 and the 4 do repeat. So we're not going to write those numbers down twice. We only need to write them down once. So A union B would contain the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
Um, we do have a set that we've created. Um, and you'll also notice that these numbers are listed in order from least to greatest. That, that wouldn't necessarily have to happen. Uh, it just makes this a little bit easier to read. So how about C union B? Well, once again, just dump everything in C and B together to create the union. So that would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And how about C intersect B? Well, that means a set that contains all the elements that C and B have in common. And if you look carefully, you'll see that C and B have nothing in common. So the intersection of C and B is the empty set. Now there's one more operation that we need to talk about uh, that is sometimes a little bit misleading. It's called the set complement. So the set complement x minus y is the set of all elements of x that are not in y. And the thing that can be a little misleading about the set complement is the fact that when we see that sign, uh, it looks like a subtraction sign. And in, in a large sense, it is a subtraction sign. Um, if you can think of subtraction as a takeaway. So when I see x minus y, what that means is start with the elements in x and take away from that anything that also happens to be in y. So with these sets, if we wanted to find a minus b, that means we would have to start with a, so we're starting with the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we want to take away from that any of those elements that happen to also be in B, which would mean the 2 and the 4 would have to be taken away. Now there is a 6 in B, but we don't happen to have a 6 in A, so we can't take that 6 away. That really doesn't matter. We're just going to take away from A the things that we also see in set B. So how about C minus A? Well, that means we're starting with the elements we see in C, which is the 3, the 5, and the 7. And then we're going to take away from that any of those elements that happen to also be in set A, which means the 3 and the 5 would have to be taken away, leaving us with just the 7. So let's go back to the idea of Venn diagrams and representing sets with Venn diagrams. So remember, we're going to use this rectangle for the universal set. And we're going to use circles to represent the attributes of the subsets of that set. So we could have a universal set that has two identified attributes, A and B in this case. And if we have that, then we can separate that universal set into 2 to the second power or 4 regions. So what we're going to find is that sometimes it's useful to number these regions. There's 1, 2, 3, 4 regions. And the numbering really isn't important here. Uh, it's not that that region that is numbered 1 is always called region 1. Uh, we're simply numbering these regions so that we can say, hey, look at that region. That's region 1. Now what if we have a universal set that's divided into three attributes, A, B, and C? So how many regions have we divided our universal set into? Well, if there's three attributes, then there are two to the third or eight regions that we can identify. Now some of those regions are contained in only one circle, one of our attributes. Some are in two circles. We've got a region, that's region 5 in this case, that's contained in all three circles. And there's even a region, that's region 8 in this particular picture, that's contained in none of the circles. So anything that lives in region 8 would have none of those three attributes that we've divided the universal set into. So now that we can see how to take a universal set and divide it into regions with these attributes, let's see how we can simply color in the regions that are being described. So let's say we wanted to color in everything in this universal set that is contained in a circle A that, that has attribute A. Well, that simply means we would color in all of circle A. 
how about if we wanted to color in everything in this Venn diagram that's contained in a complement? So remember, the complement of a set is everything that's not in the set. So we want to color in everything that's not in circle A, which would be this portion of the Venn diagram. So everything that's in this green portion is in A complement. How about A union B? Well, union means we are looking for elements that are in either set A or set B or both A and B. So A union B would be these three regions of the Venn diagram. The one on the region that you see on the left that's shaded in is just in A. The region that is on the right that's shaded is just in B. And the region in the middle uh, is contained in both circles, so that's in the intersection. So that's in both A and B. How about A intersect B? So intersect means we have to find a region that contains elements that are in both sets, in both attributes. That would be this part of the Venn diagram. How about A minus B? Now remember that minus, that, that subtraction idea, we're thinking of it like a takeaway. So that means we start with what's in circle A, but then we want to take away from that anything that's also in circle B. So we need to take away this part of it. So that would be a picture of A minus B. Now the more operations we throw into these descriptions, the trickier it gets to figure out what's really being described. So this is a complement union B. We want to describe everything in the picture that's outside of the A circle. Union, meaning in addition to everything that's inside the B circle. So everything that's outside the A circle is this blue shaded part. But now we're going to also include everything that's inside the B circle, which means we have to throw in this part of the Venn diagram. How about A intersect B complement? Now intersect means these two things have to happen at the same time. They have to overlap. So that's A. And then we want that to overlap with everything that is outside of B, which means that's the region that we would have left. So the more regions you have, the more complicated your statements can get. Let's say we want to find a way to draw a picture that shows A union B, and then we're intersecting that with C complement. So A union B is everything that's either inside A or inside B or inside both of those. So that would be this region. Now we want to intersect that with, find where that overlaps with what is outside of C. So that overlaps with what's outside of C right here. Now let's look at a different way to do that same problem because sometimes just trying to kind of reason out what these pictures should look like can be a little bit tricky. So here's another way to approach the problem. Remember we said that these regions that we have could be numbered just so that we can identify them. So let's do that. We know there's eight regions and we're going to number them so that if I say, oh look, there's region three, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then what we're going to do is take what we're seeing described in this statement and identify which regions are being described. So for example, I can see that we need to know something about region A. And I can see from our Venn diagram that region A contains, or circle A, contains regions 1, 2, 4, and 5. And we also need to know something about what's in attribute B. And so if I look at the Venn diagram, the circle that is circle B contains 2, 3, 5, and 6. And we're going to need to know something about C. 
So circle C contains 4, 5, 6, and 7. And the reason we need to know something about C is that we really want to know about C complements. So everything outside of C is 1, 2, 3, and 8. Now we have to combine these with our set operators. So let's start with A union B. If A contains 1, 2, 4, and 5, and B contains 2, 3, 5, and 6, union means dump them all together but throw out the repetitions. So A union B would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now we need to intersect that with C complement. So C complement we, complement we have written right above that. So we want to intersect A union B with C complement. So look at those two sets and find everything they have in common. I can see that they have a 1 in common, a 2 in common, and a 3 in common. So now what we have is a description of the regions that we need to color in to describe this particular combination of set operations. So we're going to color in region 1, region 2, and region 3, and that's exactly what we got when we simply reasoned it out. So some people find that numbering regions and working with the regions that are described in each of the parts of this statement is a little bit easier to do than simply trying to reason out what should be shaded in. So what if we wanted to find A complement union B intersect C? Let's try that same method that we just did. Let's number all the regions and let's determine what regions are being described. So A complement is everything outside of A, which would be regions 3, 6, 7, and 8. We need to know something about B. So the regions inside circle B are 2, 3, 5, and 6. We need to know something about region C. So inside circle C, I see 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now to intersect B and C, we need to find all the elements that are contained in both B and C at the same time. So that would be regions 5 and 6. And then we need to take that set and union it with A complement. So I'm going to look at which regions I've written are in each of these sets. So B intersect C was regions 5 and 6. Union means I'm going to throw that together with everything that's in A complement, which we said was 3, 6, 7, and 8. So we're putting 3, 6, 7, and 8 all together with 5 and 6 and throwing out that repeating 6, and we end up with 3, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And if we shade those regions, we've got a nice picture of A complement union B intersect C. Okay, so let's look at these Venn diagrams in a little different way. Uh, let's say that I've got a Venn diagram. It's got two circles, so it has four regions. We've got the regions numbered. Um, and what we've done is we've just taken some stars and made them live within some of these regions. So I'm just going to ask you to think about counting stars. So how many stars do you see inside circle A? Well, circle A has three stars in it. How many do you see inside circle B? Well, that would be five stars. How many are only in circle A? So be careful with this one. Only in circle A is just the two stars that are in region 1. How many are in both A and B? Now you have to be a little careful here too. When you see the word and, you're thinking of intersection, where they cross. So there's only one that's in both A and B. How many are in either A or B? So when you see the word or, or is acting like a union. We're just going to dump them all together. So you're going to count all the stars that are in either A or B or both at the same time and that's seven stars. How many stars are in exactly one circle? Well, that's six. 
that would be the two stars that are in region 1, they're only in circle A, and the four stars that are in region 3, they're only in circle B. So 2 plus 4 is 6. And how many stars are in neither circle? Well, that's the two stars that are in region 4, the two stars that are outside of both circles. And how many total stars are there? Well, there's nine total stars in all. So, here's why we need to be able to count the number of elements in parts of the Venn diagram. I'm going to want to look at problems where we're, we're describing the attributes of subsets of a universal set and we're really counting the number of elements in each of those regions. So, out of 20 students, 8 play baseball, 7 play football, and 3 play both sports. How many play neither sport? Now, stop and think about this. The first thing that might pop into your head is to say, oh, 8 plus 7 is 15, 15 plus 3 is 18, so there must be two students that don't play either sport. And that ends up not being the right answer. So let's see what's going on here. Um, let's draw a Venn diagram and identify the attributes, which is baseball players and football players. And we're going to take these numbers that we have and fit them in the Venn diagram. So let's start with that 20. We know that 20 is our the number in our universal set. So all the numbers inside this rectangle have to add up to 20. Now from here we're going to look for a number that describes where the circles overlap. A number that describes something that has to do with both attributes at the same time, which would be the three people that play both sports. So you can imagine if we actually had people standing in circles, there would be three people standing right there. They're inside both circles. Now we need to look at the other two attributes. We know that 8 play baseball and 7 play football. And you need to think really carefully about this. If it says 8 play baseball, that means inside the entire baseball circle there are 8 people. And if it says 7 play football, that means in inside the entire football circle there are 7 people. So if there's 8 people that play baseball, and there's eight in the entire baseball circle, we've already counted three of those people. So the remaining five of the eight people would have to be in the part of that circle that is inside baseball but not in football. Five plus three is eight. There's a total of eight inside the baseball circle. Now use that same reasoning with football. Inside the entire football circle, there have to be seven people because seven people play football. And we've already got three people standing inside the football circle. So the other four people would have to be in this part of the Venn diagram. They're inside the football circle, but they're outside the baseball circle. Now, count up how many people we have so far. We have five plus three plus four. That's 12 people, and there's 20 people in all, which means the other eight people are standing outside of both circles. They don't play baseball, they don't play football. So, how many people play neither sport? That would be eight. How many people play only baseball? So that means we're looking for people that are inside the baseball circle, but they're not inside the football circle. That's five people. How many people play exactly one sport? So that means either baseball's their only sport or football's their only sport. And that would be the five people that only play baseball plus the four people that only play football. That's nine people in all. So let's make this idea just a little more complex. Let's suppose that we have even more attributes to think about. Out of 30 people surveyed, 20 like blue, 20 like pink, 15 like green. 14 like blue and pink, 11 like pink and green, 12 like blue and green, and 10 like all three colors. How many people like only pink? 
So the first thing we're going to do is draw a Venn diagram showing these three attributes, which are people that like blue, people that like pink, and people that like green. Now we're going to think about how many people are in this universal set. Well, there's 30, which means all of the numbers inside this Venn diagram, inside these eight regions, have got to add up to 30. And then we're going to look for something that describes where all three circles intersect. In other words, we're looking for something that describes people that like blue and pink and green. And we can see that there's 10 people that like all three of those colors. So we'll write a 10 in the intersection of all three circles in our Venn diagram. And now we're going to have to start working backwards a little bit. We're going to look at parts of the Venn diagram that describe two colors at the same time. So for example, we are told that 12 people like blue and green, which means where blue and green intersect has to add up to 12. And 10 of those people are already represented in that part of the Venn diagram where all three circles intersect the other two of the 12 have to be in the region of the Venn diagram where blue and green intersect, but pink is not. Now we're going to keep working backwards. 11 like pink and green. So if we look at the intersection of pink and green, there have to be 11 people in that intersection. And 10 of those people have already been counted. So that means there's still one person that we need to count that likes pink and green, but not blue. 14 like blue and pink, so where blue and pink intersect has to add up to 14. We've already counted 10 of those people. The other four have to go in the part of the Venn diagram that contains blue and pink, but not green. Now 15 like green, count how many are in the green circle at this point. The green has 2 and 10 and 1, so that's 13, which means the other two that have to be inside the green circle are in this part of it, our Venn diagram. They like green, but they don't like any other color. 20 like pink, so count how many are in the pink circle at this point. That's 4 plus 10 plus 1, 15. The other 5 only like pink. They don't like anything else. And 20 like blue, so count how many are in the blue circle at this point. That's the 4 plus the 10 plus the 2, which is 16. The other four like blue, but nothing else. Now remember, there are 30 people in all. So we need to count up how many people we've represented at this point. So we need to count up the four plus the four plus the five plus the two plus the 10 plus the one plus the two. So that's 10, 20, 25, 28. And there's 30 people in all. So there's two more people that we haven't counted out of the 30. They have to live outside all three circles. They don't like any of those colors. Now the question we've been asked is how many people like only pink? So that would be the five people that are inside the pink circle, but they are not inside any other circle. They don't like blue, they don't like green. How many like blue and green, but not pink? So now we're looking for a part of the Venn diagram that shows blue and green overlapping, but outside the pink circle. That's two people. And how many like none of the three colors? Well, that would be the two people outside all three circles. So that's a look at using Venn diagrams and using set operations in order to display some information about sets and to combine sets.